Hi guys, welcome to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Yvonne and you have landed on Ginger Chick Rehab where I love to take pre-love thrift store secondhand finds and share the process with you all of how I make them over add them into my own home for home decor or I get them ready to resell. So in today's video, it's all about salvage. It's all about pieces that normally people would just throw out or they, they don't necessarily see the same vision I see for them and I'm always happy to run across them. So I hope you are ready for a good trash tr treasure, get that out of the junk pile and don't throw that away video. But they say somebody else's junk is somebody else's treasure. And these may look like junk to y'all, but I see treasures. I know they're a mismatched pair. They're rusty, crusty, just some horse tack that has seen better days. But oh my goodness, wait till you see what I create with this. So I'm going to be creating a hanging swag with these. And I need to make a hole to be able to string something to hang these stirrups with so I'm gonna to go to my crocodile which is like a leather like can punch leather but let me tell you that horse tack leather whoo that's a whole different brand and I think that it should be the way that it has to weather so at least I'll get my starting point of where my hole will be I did need some existence of some scissors and a poking tool and an exacto knife to actually get the hole to poke all the way through, but I needed a hole. Some things are easier to do in your mind than when you actually do it, not as easy. Now I need a rope to hang these from, some kind of rope. So I just actually bought this jute rope at the Dollar Tree store. So I know that it's new. I'm not too worried about that at the moment. I just needed something strong to hold. Like I don't want a skinny little piece of jute to hold those great big stirrups. So we can make this look old. That's not a problem. So in this jar, I have some watered down Waverly antiquing wax and Waverly ink paint. And I haven't really used that often. So it looks like it's gotten quite black over time, but so I'm just doing like a little tester end because usually I would just dip the whole string in there and it should be good. But I think, I think that it's, I think it'll work. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dip the whole jute roping right into the watered down mixture. And I really wasn't sure. I have a couple projects going on, so I did two ropes here. And all I'm going to do is just squish most of the water out. It didn't really necessarily absorb all the way through the rope, which was a good thing. I'm just wiping it off. But look at how it aged this brand new jute. And it actually kind of swelled it a little bit and made it kind of like worn looking, which is exactly what I was going for. For me, the easiest way to visually do a swag like this, where I'm going to be adding items to it as it hangs, is to put it on the wall and hang it and work on it from there. Is it easy? Probably not. But for visually how everything's going to hang, it's just easier. So I'm going to start off with one of these. I think it's a bit. <laughs> I don't, it may not even be horse tack for all I know. But all I know is that I thought this would make a beautiful hanger. So rusty crusty at its best. I'm just going to weave the roping in through this bit. We're going to call it a bit and if I'm wrong feel free to correct me in the comments. So these stirrups are pretty darn heavy. 
that leather was very thick. So I'm going to be using some of my black wire that I get at the hardware store. It's 17 gauge wire. I know it's on the thicker side, but I want this to be able to withstand the weight of what I'm going to be putting on here. So I'm just going to take a generous piece. I really don't know how much I necessarily need. <laughs> it's better to have more than enough than not enough because I can't really add wire to wire. So I'm just going to go ahead and poke it through the hole that I created. And then I'm going to twist the wire like all the way up nice and tight so this will be secure. So now before I attach, I need something to hang the stirrups from. So I, I have two other little bit bit pieces, both different sizes, just as irregular as the stirrups are. And then I'm just going to kind of put them up, just whatever my eye feels would be nice, you know, like visually appealing. And then I'm just going to take another piece of the wire. I'm going to string it around the metal part of the bit and then I'm going to poke it through. This is why it's nice to have this heavy jute roping. Poke it through that jute roping and then I'll twist the two of them together and make a nice little tight package so it is secure. And I'll do the exact same thing to the other one. So that'll give me something to start hanging items off of, not just, I didn't want everything coming from that top piece. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and hang the stirrups and that's why I left plenty of wire because I wasn't really sure like, you know, you don't want them to be even like the little the bits that I put there, they're not even, but I'm going to do that same thing. I'm going to poke that through that jute, wrap it around that wire piece so everything should be nice and secure and then twist that wire so it's nice and tight. Unfortunately, some angles are just hard to do while you're standing up. I needed it to lay down, but at least I have my guide of where I want it to hang and how I want it to hang. That way I can make sure that I'm getting it twisted nice and tight and I can clip it off. there is my base that is my big items I just absolutely love it already and I could leave it alone but I got some more I want to add to it so and I'm not adding any greenery to it whatsoever I have a whole pile of horse sleigh bells that have seen oh have they seen better days so I actually bought them at auction like that because I'm like they're still beautiful sleigh bells and they're all in pieces some of them are on leather and I'm yeah I'm going to use the pieces and parts on here I think that I can make a dangle I think I think the sound would be beautiful and so I'll just play around with adding these to the swag <music> After I figure out each time where I want it to hang, it's, it's just an easier way to take it down, put it on my workbench, and twist the wire and cut that off. So it will just be a whole bunch of that, that kind of repeat the process to get it to lay the way that I, or hang the way that I want it to hang. And some parts I have no idea what this even was. 
<laughs> but I'm like, the aged leather is gorgeous. The rusty, crusty metal pieces at the end. I would like some more things to be able to hang from it. So I'm not just hanging it off from those, those bits in that same general area. So I'm just going to go ahead and weave this in and the weight of it should hold itself. It's not going to slide out because I have to really angle those pieces to get it through that top piece. Which in my head was a great idea to use this because I have two of the bells that are not attached to leather anymore. So perfect, two random metal pieces and two bells. So now I'm gonna go ahead and use up pretty much all the bells and all this leather. That way it doesn't just look like there's two strands hanging. You know, I've got multiple strands with that extra leather piece that I hung with the other bells. And then I can hang this off it so it's trending down more too. I did have to make another hole in the leather so I had something to attach the wire to. The crocodile is coming in handy. I just, it's not a tool that I've used a lot lately, but I just recently used it on a, another project too. I absolutely love how this is turning out, but I have some of these stars. Somebody, I bought them in somebody's booth at an antique mall. They're cut out of some type of metal. They're rusty crusty. They're gorgeous. I did have to punch a hole to get, I had just have some Dollar Tree jute that I'm going to tie them on. And I, I there was only four of them in the person's booth. So I, I'm just going to kind of trundle the four of them down this whole swag. Last guitar, I didn't really have anything to attach the jute to, so I just just used some of more of that wire. Now that I have everything on, I can go ahead and cut my initial jute. I, you know, that, that's, you know, a little bit on the nervous side because I don't want to pre-cut it early and have the weight of it make it hang funny. So I just gonna, I'm just gonna have a, just a little bit like an inch showing from underneath those stars. I don't want that newer jute that I just put on the stars with to look new, so we'll just take that same watered down mixture and I'll just brush it on, not any big deal. I have some more junk I'm going to be working with. So we have these weather vane pieces and parts. Chicken, a duck, duck, yeah, we're going to call it a duck. And then a, like a north, south, east, west. Now, none of those three went together. They're just bought separately. <laughs> and then some legs. Hey, it all works. Can you envision it? So the first thing I need to do is work on the leg. So the leg part needs to be flush with the bottom because I want to make some weather vane stands. 
So I need that bottom to be flat. No matter how hard I tried and even Chris tried to get that wheel to pop out, it was not going anywhere. So I'm like, you know what? Just cut it off then. Just cut off where you think, <laughs> where you think the met there isn't metal inside that wooden piece. And then I want to be able to use this north, south, east, west, but it is too long. It's too tall. And oddly enough, the little duck piece actually fits into the top of it. Though, like I said, when I purchased these, you know, yeah, I purchased junk. Um, they were, they were not anywhere near each other. Two separate purchases. But unfortunately, since we had to cut the bottom off of the leg and I'm not able to use the hole where the wheel was, Chris is just going to drill in a hole. So he just found a bit that's a little bit bigger than what that weather vane, the north, south, east, west, the metal is, the rod is. And then he's just going to drill down in there, trying to keep it as centered as he possibly can. But I would like to paint up the legs. I'm not just going to leave them looking like wood legs. I want them to look more like salvage pieces that they are by painting them up white. And I'm running, I, flower sack is, seems to be my go-to. And even though I order two bags at a time, I, I'm like, oh, I should have ordered. But so I'm mixing actually flower sack, sweet pick and smoke paint with window pane, sweet milk milk paint. Now the window pane has a, a little bit more of a gray hue to it and for some reason when I've painted with it before I feel like I have to do more coats than I have to do with the flower sack so that's why I usually have always chose the flower sack. But before I start painting on them I want to make sure since I just cut that piece of wood off the bottom I want to make sure that that is nice and flat that it's going to stand on that. It's heavy enough at the bottom that I don't need like an extra piece of wood to make it a better base by any means. I just need to make sure that it is flat so <laughs> I'm just using the drum sander to make sure that everything is nice and flat. So I'm using the heat gun not necessarily to completely dry it, just to stop anything from dripping and running since it's one of those items that I'm standing straight up and all the paint wants to kind of run down a little bit. I'm just trying to prevent that from happening. thing I did to prep these legs was to clean them with some Dawn dish soap and let them dry. I'm just letting that paint absorb right in and it's going to take a couple coats to cover as always with white but uh, there's just something about white chippy paint that has my heart especially when it comes to salvage finds.
Voila, my pain is drying on my legs. I'm going to work on the chicken here, rooster. Um, it's like a painted burgundy color. The other two pieces are completely fine. I love them. They're my rusty crusty that I just absolutely love. But this one needs a little bit of help. So, Rusty Krusty has my heart. <laughs> if you're a regular on my channel, you know that. So I'm going to be doing some of the patina to make this chicken Rusty Krusty at its best. So we're going to start off with some of the Dixie Belle Prime Start. Cause since I'm priming or going to be painting over some paint, I thought using a primer would be a good idea on this piece. So I'm going to be using a well-loved paintbrush that's kind of flared out and then doing a dabbing technique with the brush because rust use it usually isn't flat. It's usually got a lot of texture going on and dabbing it with a brush like this kind of gives it that nice realistic rusty texture. But I need to do both sides. So the primer really dried really fast, actually. So I just waited a little bit longer for it to dry. That way I can flip it over and do the other side. Now I'll go in with some of the Dixie Bells Patina in the iron paint. Same technique. I just have a well-loved, I use a stencil brush. This one is a stencil brush from the Dollar Tree store that has been well-loved. It's all nice and flared out and perfect for the... Perfect for dab brushing on oh, patina paint. I have to do one side at a time and let that patina spray work. I'm doing the Dixie Bells green patina spray and then I'll just mist it on and let it do its magic. And then once that is all dry, I'll flip it over and spray the other side. So if you ever use milk paint, milk paint is unpredictable. I was hoping to get some chipping, some crazing, some crackling. I got nothing. So that just meant the wood was really dry and it just absorbed it right in. But that's okay. I'm just going to go to town with some 80 grit sandpaper and then just sand, sand, sand until I get the distressed look that I'm going for. <music> that since the spray had a chance to pool why the rooster was laying flat it turned out amazing but now I just need to seal it in using some weather defense metal spray so I'm not sure if this is a conventional way to adhere these into but I wanted something permanent I didn't just want a hot glue that hot glue would come loose I could have epoxied but that might take a little bit longer to set up and dry. So Bondo it is. I'm just using some of my wood filler Bondo to fill in the hole and then stick the rod in there. The smaller hole will be easier because it's not very big, it's not very sloppy. So it should I should be able just to put it in there, hold it for a few minutes, make sure that it's staying straight up and down and we should be good to go. My other hole is quite big, and I'm using up the rest of the Bondo I already mixed. I know as I'm scraping it off the plate, I'm like, I'm not going to have enough. Shoot, I'm going to have to make another batch quickly, because as soon as you start mixing up Bondo, it starts to cure. So, I like, I only got like 10 minutes playtime here. I, I might have been a little stressed at the time, but uh, it, it all ended up working out. So I'm just trying to fill overfill the hole enough that when I put the rod in there, I know that some of it's going to like squish out, but I just want to make sure that it's a nice tight fit and that when it sets up, it'll be nice, nice and hard. And because this hole is much bigger, it's a little bit on the sloppy side. So 
I just watched a little bit of TV and let it sit up. So now that it's cured, it cures pretty fast, y'all. So yes, within 10 minutes, it's ready to go and I can just touch up paint. So I love how these distressed, so I don't feel the need to darken it or change it, anything like that. There's no crazing to bring out with some colored waxes. So all I'm doing is just using some of the Homestead Natural Clear Wax to seal that milk paint in and, and it'll just make that wood pop. Oh, these are gorgeous. sticking with a salvage theme here so this is a I think it's an older tile it appears to be an old metal ceiling tile that a lot of the paint has chipped off I think anyway you know it's all a guessing game they make really good reproductions and then I also have a smaller tile also that I would like to recreate and make into some wall decor and then I would like to hang them from some of these old pulleys. I love the thought of the salvage finds. I love this thought of these being their hangers. My guess is that maybe somebody tried to paint this previously and then the paint did not adhere. So as I'm washing it off with some Dawn dish soap and some hot water, I'm trying to see if I can get anything that is just chipping off really easily as you can see my washcloth has a lot of it on there um, trying to make sure that I get all the loose pieces that I can off I think I got most everything chipped off but I'm just going to use the air compressor one to help dry it and two helped if there's anything else that is loose the pressure of the air compressor is going to blow it away So the only thing I really need to fix on this piece is the ends have just been bent up and the, that which makes them pretty sharp. So I'm just going to take some needle nose pliers and bend them back down flat. I want to paint this piece and I want it to be chippy and I want to use some milk paint, but I don't want it all just to chip off. And, and this is a very shiny, slippery surface, non-porous, nothing's going to soak into it. So this Fusion's Alter Grip is the perfect bond bonder for this because it's i like it because it's clear so i'll be able if it my paint does end up chipping the way i would like it to chip um you won't be able to just see white you'll just see the clear and the colors that are underneath i believe that this is the same story for this tile that somebody tried to paint it the paint did it here it here it just all chipped off I am pretty sure this is definitely a newer piece, so I'm just going to go ahead and get it cleaned up. And then I'm going to do the same thing, dry it off, and then use some of that Alter Grip on there. The thing with the Alter Grip is it's just because it's dry, you still have to wait like 12 hours. So I do it like the day before, so then I can paint on it the next day. 
Oh, there's just something about that rusty, crusty metal, the aged wood of a old barn pulley. Oh my gosh, it's just gorgeous. So other than just getting them cleaned up with some Dawn dish soap, hot water, letting it dry, I'll go ahead and I'll seal these in with some of the Weather Defense spray just because they're going to be hanging against the wall and I don't want like the, any rustiness to go on somebody's wall. I'm using the same mixture of Sweet Pickens Milk Paint of Flower Sack and the window pane equal parts. So this is dried overnight. It's had its 12, 12 plus hours. <laughs> and I'm just going to put a nice generous coat on. It's probably going to take two coats, but oh, I hope, I hope that it chips. I hope that it doesn't all chip off, but I hope that it chips and crazes is my plan. It's the thing about milk paint is you just you can't expect it to do something. <laughs> you just have to take whatever it gives you and just be happy with the results. Now that it's dry, you can tell that one coat isn't enough. You can see some darkness underneath. So I'm going to have to do a second coat, but you can see some chippiness, some crazing going on. So oh, we just hope for the best. I'm a little worried because I can tell like in the diamond pattern in the middle, the paint kind of wants to pool, but I mean, I can only smooth it out so much, especially like the second coat of milk paint, you're reactivating that first coat of milk paint. So I just got to let it do what it's going to do. Well, I wanted it to do that. <laughs> I wanted it to do that. But I'm afraid if I just go and try to wax it right now, I'm just going to end up taking a lot of it off. So I'm going to go ahead and seal it in with some of the weather defense. I do want some of it to chip off, so we'll see what it, it's going to do. But when I go to wax it, I, I don't want the white paint to darken too much. I just wanted to emphasize the cracking and the cracking and the crazing. I think it's more crackling than crazing on this one. Now this one is more crazing than crackling, so it's the difference. The crackling is the bigger pieces that you can tell some of the chunks are going to chip off. And like this one's just crazed where, you know, I can tell that I don't, I'm not going to really get much chippiness. But I'm going to go ahead and seal this in with that Weather Defense Metal Clear Coat too. And I know right away, once I start using some of the aging wax on here, I like aging wax because I like it to get into all the crevices and give it like that environmental dirt look. That that middle piece is definitely going to chip right off. I don't think it's attached at all. I might have to help some pieces here and there. to, If some of it's going to chip off, I want like random areas to chip off <laughs> well you know, sometimes you just have to play with it and help it al help it along so once I get my aging wax on I'll go back in with a natural clear wax and then rub it in and yeah I will probably pick at some of the pieces so it's a little bit chippier for, especially since those are pretty big chips going on there
like I said, you just have to take what you were, you were given. So I tried to chip off as much as I possibly could, and there we go. It is what it is. So now I'm just taking some 80 grit sandpaper because milk paint is good and strong. So once it's adhered, it's adhered, and then I sealed it in. So 80 grit, I want to like distress some of the edges. I don't want it just to look this like this shiny. I know that I already waxed it, and that's perfectly fine the wax I wanted to get into the crevices and really make it look like an older piece so I'm just going to get it down to some of the metal give it a little bit more age <laughs> Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same, same aging wax, the same natural clear wax. You'll really start to see like the crazing once that aging wax gets into the crackling cra crazing. It's more crazy, <laughs> crazing. And uh, there's really not, I think like one or two spots chipped, but that that's about it. So the bonding worked wonderful for there. Maybe the other piece I didn't get enough bonding on. I, I who knows, but. I still love it. I, I love that it looked like an older piece anyway. But I want to make this even look older and I think I'm just going to have to take 80 grit sandpaper and then just go to town making some of the metal pop. Right now it just looks like it might be a dirty ceiling tile so I need to give it a little bit more age by sanding it. When I push down on this, you'll hear it pop. That leaves a little indent. So that way when you're using your drill bit, see how it dented it? I'm using my drill bit now to stay. Now this one's called a step bit, so every time you cut, it'll step down. He just has all these fancy tools that I have no idea, but I know he makes the job a lot, a lot easier, especially when I needed to get a big enough hole to fit that jute roping through. And then all I'm going to do is just tie it in a nice tight knot and I think it should stay. The tin itself isn't very heavy. And if you were interested how I decorate with pre-loved items, like the items that you see behind me, click on over to the Ginger Chick The Journey channel, where I show the behind the scenes of going to auctions, 
doing secondhand shopping, showing my hauls and how I decorate my home and how I fit it into my own home decor. So thank you so much for watching today's video and what did you think? Would you have picked these pieces up and would you have married them, Frankenstein to them together from the weather vanes to the legs to the pulleys and the pieces of ceiling tile and then all that salvaged for that swag, the horse tack. There may be a piece or two that's not horse tack, but oh my gosh, I just love, absolutely loved how each one of these turned out. Give me a quick comment down below. Do you have any of these items laying in your stash or hoard? <laughs> um, and have I inspired you to look at the trash pile in a new way? So thanks again for watching today's video. As always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you're new and you're checking out the channel and you stayed to the end and you love pre-loved secondhand finds and you love to make them over, decorate your own home with them, please smash that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye.